It's Poetry Reading Day here in week five of American Literature 2. A lot of numbers. Um, first, a poem from 1918 by somebody you've never heard of, <clears throat> Jesse B. Rittenhouse. The poem is My Wage. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged an evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. But once you've set the wages, why, you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn dismayed that any wage I had asked of life, life would have paid. Now, I read that not because uh, Jesse B. Rittenhouse is a particularly brilliant poet, uh, or that that is a particularly uh, great example of American poetic art, uh, but because it reminds me of well, a couple of things, but it, 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 it reminds me, or actually this next poem reminds me of Rittenhouse's poem, which is called My Wage. Uh, this is called The Debt by one of our writers for this week, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. This is the debt I pay just for one riotous day, years of regret and grief, sorrow without relief. Pay it, I will, to the end, until the grave, my friend, gives me a true release, gives me the clasp of peace. Slight was the thing I bought, small was the debt I thought, poor was the loan at best, God, but the interest. Okay. Now, I don't know that that's uh, one of Dunbar's greatest works, either, uh, but I just want to kind of make some connections here that may seem a little bit loosey-goosey. That is a technical literary term. Um, this poem by Jesse Rittenhouse, My Wage, the first one I read, I Bargained with Life for a Penny, uh, is a poem I've known for years because my father read this poem as a young man and he took it to heart and he claims that it really changed his life. I don't know that it changed his life that much, but it certainly gave voice to the thoughts behind his life. He basically grew up in a uh, very um, lower class family and said, I want to do great things. And he did moderately great things and uh, it's benefited me greatly. Uh, but this poem gave sort of an anthem or, a, or, a, or a, an extended slogan to the way that my family, as as uh, represented by my father, approached life. Dunbar's poem is, I think, more negative. Although, although Rittenhouse's poem does say, "I learned dismayed that any wage I'd ask of life, life would have paid." We're supposed to read that and say, "Oh, oh, well, it's okay. Uh, you know, I'm gonna ask more of life than." This, this person did who worked for a menial's hire. In the debt, uh, we don't ever know what the riotous day involves or what it is that, that uh, the poet has bought, but it's still this sense of you, you reap what you sow or, or uh, you know, what comes around goes around or whatever slogan you want to you want to put to it. And I mention this because this sort of middle-class sensibility seems to fit with realism and the uh, the sense of of there is right and wrong and we can look at it and we can explore it and and critique those who do wrong and, and all of those sorts of of related almost moralistic uh, questions of just common people are things that run through a lot of the realists and so, as we look at these African American writers, we've got uh, Du Bois and uh, um, Booker T. Washington, went blank there. Uh, we've got the, the poets, James Weldon Johnson and Paul Lawrence Dunbar. You have to have three names to, to be a poet in this situation. And, uh, and then the, the fiction of Charles Chestnut, I think one of the things we'll see in all of them is that they are, probably with the exception of Du Bois, the, 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 they're very middle class, 
and fairly traditional, even though they, 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 they're all looking at things from this distinctly uh, African-American perspective and saying, you know, yes, you know, we're going to do the right thing, we're going we're gonna, to uh, look to our heritage and build on that, we're going you know, to pay the debt, we're going to work hard, and sure, a lot of crummy stuff has happened and continues to happen, but there's a way out of this, which I think is a, a, a realist approach. Next week, when we look at the naturalists, they would say, you know what, you probably work, 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 and then somebody will come along and, and, and can uh, make an interesting musical recording or can uh, shoot a basketball, and they'll be the one to succeed, even though they have no positive qualities at all. So, I don't know that that gives us uh, a whole lot to go on, but I find this a really intriguing uh, set of writings uh, as this, this, uh, this simple white guy who can't really relate to the African-American experience of over a hundred years ago. Uh, I, still, I still find it fascinating and, and hope you will too. So that's it for this week. Let's move on. <laughs>